Oh, not yet. Greetings, welcome to the first only triage Wix online meeting. So today is October 8th, I guess. Wow, end of 2013 is coming quick. So there is no status, there's none of that. We're just going to go straight into the bugs. So let's go ahead and go do that. Let's go look at all the untriaged stuff. A few have come in since last week, because that's what we're wanting to do. And we're going to get this show rolling. Bob, you're going to be scribe again? I am. All right. So this bug actually, I opened up um, early this morning. Um, this has been a suggestion I've had for a long time. Other people have made it as well. In Wix 4, instead of using our goofy, well, goofy, our early <laughs> homegrown extensively mechanism, let's use MEF um, and do all kinds of clean up on the extensibility mechanism, make it easier for people to pull stuff in. This should also make it easier for us to change the internal workings of some Wix stuff that we haven't had in the past. Um, we tried to change something late in uh, 3.7 that was all goofed up, and if we'd done interfaces, we would have been able to do things better. Anyway, MEF should make a clean break in that, so that's for four. Um, unless people like really want to vote, no, we shouldn't clean up our sensibility stuff and things like that. All right, so that's for four. It's one of the things we're working on in Four. This is the other thing here. This is the other feature just to open. Oh, Blair has a question coming. Maybe. No. Type something. Stop typing. All right. So the other thing then is um, did some analysis on what to do about XML document and our use of it in the compiler and the preprocessor and all that kind of stuff. Um, a few things came about from the analysis. Now that we're on 4.0, we could look at using X document, which is generally more popular, but that alone doesn't make it something to move to. The big kicker for me that made X document interesting is the fact that you can do these annotations on it, which are very, very cool because we actually annotate all of the elements in the Wix tool set with the source line number, so you get nice, pretty source line numbers throughout the build process and all that kind of stuff. Um, and we do that by storing an element on the, um, or I think it's preprocessor instruction before the element and going backwards in the tree is really slow and it has all these performance problems that we've always known it had. It was just kind of like, uh, this kind of worked. So I looked at moving it after because going forward in the element would be faster, but then you have to fight with getting it in the correct place with the elements that have text in them. That's a pain. Uh, so this annotation is actually an ideal solution for that problem. And the other thing is that X document has been shown by various people to be sometimes two to three times faster than X document. I think it's mostly because it just does less work than XML document does. Both of those should make the compiler run smoother, faster, better, and generally people will like the API better because it seems to be far more popular than XML document. So anyway, that's what that uh, this feature is about. And I want to get these in as features so that people could see, you know, as do work and can see progress being made against them being checked in and all that kind of good stuff. So um, there is that. Anything people want to talk about? Yes, no? Okay. For me. Yeah. I know Wix 4 is kind of weird being able to talk about Wix 4 because we get to do all the huge breaking change things that we've never been able to do in Wix 3 or we haven't done in, since Wix 2 to Wix 3, which was, I don't know, what was that, 2005? maybe. So yeah, this will be a very nice cleanup. Lots of big cleanup things we can do now. Big, huge breaking changes. All right. Now, switching gears back to <laughs> the narrow world of 3x. Um, that's not good that a dialogue will get truncated or a text will get truncated. It seems like that is a good thing for 3x. Yep, I agree. Um, we talked about this one already, but it didn't go away. Um, no, I think this is actually different. No, it's the same one, how you can get the command struct and the command line properties, and you can pass them all to the BA, and the BA can then do whatever they want to do with them. And the only switch that you can't you know, change its complete meaning on is the dash log switch, the dash L and dash log switches. Those are always going to create a log file because the engine creates that before it even builds the, launches the BA so that you can get a log file if the BA uh, fails to do something very early, like fails to load. 
Yes, sorry. This was uh, one I had a question about. Ah. Um, it wasn't clear to me from the code that there was actually a way for the BA to get switches that the engine didn't process. Or sorry, that the engine did process. All of these switches that the engine process should end up in that struct um, that gets passed to you, except the the engine talking to itself switches, which nobody should get besides the engine. So as far as I know, all things that are all switches end up getting passed to the BA in the end. And you could then say dash quiet doesn't mean run quiet. It means you know tell the user pop up dialog box that says shh and then go off in the show UI anyway. So you would get dash quiet. You just have to know in the command struct in the command struct, the struct that is called command, that the that's the display property I think, and it would be set to quiet. Right. The the my confusion stems from looking at the code, which appears to only append that append each argument if it is unknown to the engine. Oh, we don't put them back in arguments. You'd have you'd get them as you know, interpreted members of the struct that you would then have to, you know, use and reinterpret in your BA. So your BA would have to understand burn and interpret them, and then, it, you know, you would not get dash quiet as a command line property property in the args. You'll get it as the display member of the command struct being set to the enum quiet. Okay. So, so you still get it. You'll have to go know that that's what dash quiet was, which you'd have to anyway. But you still get it, and then you can do whatever you want. Right. So I guess. So you're saying that for this feature request, um, someone would have to look at, you know, for example, display to know that if it's set to none, that means someone passed in. That, you know, slash Q? What? Yeah. Okay, okay. Or slash quiet, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, I think that's the, the pro kind of the problem right there is it's one or the other, and there's no way for the BH to know. I, to be clear, I, yeah. don't, I don't have a lot of sympathy for this request. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, you can get all of that back. The problem is you can't prevent the engine from, I mean, the one root problem is you cannot prevent the engine from interpreting the log switch. Like, that's the one switch. So if you do not want dash L or dash log, the standard log switches from, you know, Windows Update or wherever that came from, you can't tell in burn not to use it. Yeah, again, I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, the engine. I am too. I, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah. The engine's entirely in charge of logging. So, right. I mean, the BA can add to logging, but the engine's yeah. always going to do something with it. So I'm perfectly fine with that one. And to be honest, I'm, I'm also fine with the rest of this. I think it's a bad idea to have switches that aren't handled in a standard, standard switches handled in a standard way. Um, the idea of, making it possible or easier to handle standard switches in a non-standard way does not appeal to me. All right. So um, I, I, I'm willing to say, you know, you can you can deduce what the switches were and do whatever you want, um, but we're not going to add an explicit way to, you know, ignore command line parameters. I, I, I'm, I'm down with that. Basically, and to me, the only problem is the dash L switch, and even that, it's not enough to do... Lots of crazy yeah. stuff in Engine to let you change that. Right, right. Okay. Uh, anyone disagree? All right. It's enough for okay. me. That works. Bring in heat. I thought we talked about this. Um. Yeah. Maybe we were doing it at the very end. Um. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I agree. Someone could do file filtering in heat if they wanted to. And it's absolutely necessary to have for all but the most trivial uses of heat. Okay, whatever. Um, 
We could put it in 3X and someone could take it if they wanted to do it. That's kind of where I'm at with that. Yep, I'm okay with that. All right. Which projects have a project only build actions? This is interesting. This is, yeah, I remember we talked about this the whole do only project only clean. Do other projects let you do this? I expect they probably do. Is that what, like, build versus solution build or whatever? You can, like, right click on a project. Ah, uh, yes. So, I, I, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not against it. I don't know how hard it will be, but yeah, sure. Um, probably could do it in three X. Someone to try. Yeah, I'm okay with starting there. I do not really know how hard it is. No, me either. Oh, I remember this bug. I saw this a long time ago. Custom VA and the behavior independently. Yeah, there's all this. Yeah. Yeah, this is an interesting bug. I think it's a good thing to go look at in 3x. Someone could go dig into it. Um, that works for me. Yeah, he's upset that he was using some side effect and expecting that side effect to stay stable the whole time, and it's just probably something subtle changed. Oh, the default requested to none. Oh, yeah, there's a bug about that. That's right. I remember that. We fixed another bug somewhere, I think, that caused the default requested not to be none, because this was causing everything to get all confused. And Anyway, someone could go dig into that and try to sort out what is the best behavior in the end, because I think maybe we have two bugs canceling each other out, or <laughs> putting us into a bad spot on the two options there. Certificate uninstall rollback does not roll back to deletion of certificate. That's unfortunate. When canceling an uninstallation, oh, oh, uninstall rollback does not roll. All right, so it doesn't put them back. Okay. Um, yeah, 3x. Anybody think we should yeah. do that? Yeah. There we yeah. Go. Oh, someone's provided us localizations for these things. I really wish they would send pull requests instead. How long ago was this bug opened? Is this, these are correct, right? Yeah. Oh, it was this year. Okay. Yeah, April. Um, we might be able to just take those. I don't know that we need a signing agreement for localizations of things that are already done by us. I don't think we did in the past. Because there's no IP in them. They're just translations. So I think we could take this in 3x. If someone wanted to go hunt them down and bring it over in a pull request, that would be awesome. Yeah? Are you can do you want to check into the I'm pretty IP? sure that's I'm pretty sure that's the way it went because they're they're just translations. They're not new IP, right? It's okay. it's like a translator doesn't generate IP by translating the works from two one one person to another. Phone books are facts, not Yeah, yeah. Period. Right. And, you know, a translator doesn't get copyright of a book when they translate it kind of thing. Yeah. It's, oh, illegal crap. Anyway. Um, install registration incomplete if same bundle pending. Install a bundle. Oh, I opened this. Lock a bundle. Uninstall. Yes. Install a bundle. Lock the bundle. Uninstall the bundle. Unlock the bundle. Install the bundle. They say this is still not working. We have a test case that verifies this. So that's interesting. Um, alternative scenario, which produces defaulted registration. Try to install the bundle. It will fail because the XE is locked. Restart. 
the bundle is still in the cache. Oh, I see. Install, lock, uninstall, install again. Now what they do is... Now, oh, geez, this just keeps getting crazier and crazier. At some point, we just die here. All right, um, sure. I'm going to take that in 3x. It's going to be weird. I expect we're just going to chase our tails on this forever could chase our tails forever on this one. But maybe this is all about identical away. bundles, right? Yeah, it's the exact same bundle. If you keep doing this, and then you lock it, and then you do this, and you do that. At some point, it's like, quit doing that to yourself. But, yeah, I mean, this is not a... You wouldn't expect this to be a common case. Install, right. uninstall, install, except in test scenarios. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, that's, that's the biggest. As someone you know. who just spent a couple of days installing various versions of Visual Studio, I can see where it would occasionally come in handy in real life, but, but pretty rare. You have to uninstall the bundle and then install, uninstall the same bundle and turn around and install it again. Yes. I don't... Do you, you do that? Mm, you, you do if you're trying to, uh, say, restore a broken Visual Studio. Oh, install. I suppose. Right. Um, so anyway, yeah, we can go look at 3x... That works. Um, pull request sent by somebody for do not have errors. They sent a pull request. No, they sent a fork and then they sent the pull request to the bug, it looks like. Um, oh, well. So, yeah, we could take it and well, when do you want to take that? Well... Is this a uh, breaking? Hmm. I don't... Actually, this might already be fixed. Um, it says you accepted the pull request. Oh. Good. So then we just didn't close the bug. That could very well be. Wouldn't be the first time. Especially if we missed the bug number in the... in the contribution. Yeah, let me... I'll, I'll verify that. All right, cool. If so, let's kill it. Otherwise, we can take it. I think we can take that in 3x. If it's just additions, I don't see why not. Yeah, all right. So either way, that bug will go the correct place. It looks like we took it. All right, good. Option to let patch update our version of a burn bundle. Is is this like in as opposed to having a separate patch bundle entry? No, this is, this is I, I remember this discussion. People want the ability for a patch bundle to update the parent bundle version. Right. So basically want to reach out of this bundle and go modify another bundle metadata. And then when this thing uninstalls, put back the appropriate version. And if you have multiple patches, then figure out the highest version patch and put that version back. And then, oh, and it just goes, yeah, there's this feature is, they're like, yeah, it should be really cool. And I'm like, yeah, nasty feature to get right. Um, but I don't disagree. It'd be kind of cool if we could do that. Um, yeah, see, you can do this in MSI because the MSI applies a transform to the MSI and then repairs it, right? Which means yeah. it can modify all the stuff that's in the MSI where patch bundles reach from the outside and do that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, someone could do that feature if they wanted. Um, I don't it's, know. That it's would... pretty atypical, though. I mean, you, usually the patches don't change. It, it, this is just ARP, right? Yes. And ARP, ARP is still showing the original package Not the and the separate patch package. Yeah, and these guys claim that's not what they want. They say it's confusing to a user. I might not disagree. There's ARP has certainly changed. Um, I do I do prefer the XP ARP where it shows patches as indented children. Yeah, I did too. I think that was cleaner, especially if you didn't show them by default. Right. Um, 
anyway, I, I'm not against the feature. I just, it's just going to be a pain in the butt to write, so to get correct. Yeah, I'm I, I'm kind of tempted to make this a 4x feature of Burn because I'm fine with that. I think it's big. I think I, I'm fine with that if you want to put it 4x. Anybody, nobody out there's like, oh, I don't want to write that feature, so. Let's put it in 4X, and if people really want to try to put... I, honestly, if someone wrote it against 3X and got it all working and tested, yeah, okay, fine. But I, I agree, 4X is probably a better place to start. Yeah. And it's not a burn patch. Oh, well, that's right. That's the old source force days of whatever. Uh, yes, achievements, throws, exception. Yeah, I remember hearing people say that. Um, disabled VS achievements, and all is good. So they're expecting something that we're not doing. Oh, it has a specific MPF that is supposed to be compatible with all the changes, right? Right. Right. This is this is the the whole reasoning behind my wanting to take in the new MPF um, changes. But where do you want to put this bug then? Uh, 3x. You don't think you're going to fix this in 3.8? Well, we can talk about that Thursday. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, so you might want to scroll this way on your to-remember list then. Um, yeah, good point. Edit box schema incorrectly states that it cannot have content. Oh, female? Yeah, the middle. Yes. The middle. Fine. Oh, and we don't do validation against the middle, so we would never notice. Yeah, okay. Um, 3x? Yeah, that's fine. Going into the schema and updating it. Directory search primary key does not match their locator MSI table. Ugh, hate app search. <laughs> it allows for multiple records of the same signature to exist as long as different paths are specified. Really? That's interesting. That doesn't sound right. Well, yeah, this is... Because that would mean that we didn't mark the other column as primary key, which means our columns wouldn't match the ones installer, and that would be bad. Right? Well, I think this is all the way we use ID versus how App Search does the whole signature thing. Oh, gosh. I hate that thing. The primary key should be both the ID. I mean, this usually comes from just marking the appropriate columns as primary key in the tables.xml. So, um, well, I think we we probably have the tables correct. All right. Well, someone should look at this. Um, I'm fine yeah. if you want it three eight, but we should go figure out what's going on there because that's not right. Cool. 3x? Yeah. Okay, 3x it is. Localizing MBA prereq. The requested operation successful changes not. Really? I thought we fixed this. Oh, wrong with your source code. In the fallback, that makes sense to me. Show up in the system language, right? Ah, uh, right. So he, yes, right. So in the end, it basically comes down to we could add another string to handle the the what cancel message.
think that's... Is this done already? I want to say it's already done, yeah. Alright, well, I would say that if it's not done, it could be open in 3x to do what that last comment says. Agreed. Alright. Cosmetic problem with long product name. The displeasing way the product name could be wrapped or cut. Oh, this is... Hmm... Yeah. Oh, you're looking at it. Yeah, this is the uh, the assumption made about what's in the wizard header. Mm -hmm. It's you know, traditional to have some kind of thing in the on the far right. Um, but well, you could just make your name shorter, Jeepers. Seriously? Uh, well, yeah. Installing yada yada yada. Seriously? Oh, I guess that is the prefix. Oh, that's, right, that's the prefix for this thing, and then it's just ginorm ginormous name. Um, yeah, okay. I don't care. Um, can you solve this now with a Wixel file by changing the UI? Sure. Yep. Um, I don't care. Uh, yeah, I... I don't care. The, the, the problem... Yeah, the problem is... I don't want to... I don't want to shorten that. Well, okay, so there, there are a couple problems. One is, I don't want it to wrap. No, because you'll have to move it up and all that kind of stuff then, too. Yeah, and then it starts to look funky. Yeah. And, um... You could do the dot, dot, dot thing to it. People won't like that much either, but... Well, yeah, the problem the problem with that is it you would still you would have to shorten the the static control. Yeah, because you it, do it that does dot dot dot. If if you look at the if you look at the screenshot, there is a dot 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 there. In the top um, one. The, the ellipse yeah. And then in the bottom one it wraps. So you know, you, you get the best of both worlds. The problem is this one. with the default. Yeah, there, there's an ellipsis at the end. Um, but it runs into the the graphic on the far right. Oh yeah, and Bruce brings up a good point. What happens if the graphic is different sizes or different shapes? Yeah, no. Exactly. So this is this is solved by the Wixel file that you feature that you added of being able to localize. Right. I, I think, think it's it's better. Yeah, so I I would say that's the solution to this bug, and we'll make it go away. Yep. Engine version. Engine version variables. The setter doesn't accept version instances having no build and or revision. Unspecified fields negative one, for instance, is trying to. Really? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. We could should fix that. I agree. It should do something better than what it's doing now. Overflow exception? Lame. Probably because it's ending up down in native code, and native code is taking negative one, turning it into a D word, and then the D word's overflowing, and the whole world's just kind of going. Bleh. Anyway, that's my first guess. Makes sense. Yep. And this is a dupe of Bruce Bug. Um, can we open it, and then Bruce can take it right now? Does that sound good, Bruce? And then you can go ahead and dupe whichever way you want to dupe the two. Cool, Bob? Yeah. All right. Wix heat XP crash. Wow, do we ever hit the bottom of the bucket of don't care. Um, when using heat on XP, the program crashes with blank. Oh, this is your Windows 7 as well. Seems to be recent Windows patching being installed. I don't care. <laughs> the program crashes with blank. Um, yeah, uh, but you 
you're running heat. <laughs> running heat against a directory, but it's going to do registry har harvesting and everything. Yeah. So it's entirely dependent on uh, Windows 7 works just fine with heat. So it's not a... Yeah, this is another problem. one of those. We could do a better job of trying to automatically register itself. We already have a bug open on that part of it. So I, I think we just make this bug go away and say, you know, you can suppress registration and stuff, you know, whatever, to not get your DLLs that are crashing to come up or whatever. Because I know we have another bug open on having Heat try to handle this better. And I don't want to keep this one open as well. Oh, when it fails to self reg Yeah, when it fails to self try to do less or something, <laughs> right? Well, I, yeah, personally, I dislike the way we munch all those things together. Fair enough. So I say we make this one go away and know that we have another heat bug on this. They take it crash. That's awesome. All right. Performance counter refers to obsolete thing. So uh, we probably should fix that. Uh, Wix tool set, you can do it in 3x, yes? Um, wait, what is this? And this says the help page refers oh, to the old oh, one in instead of the new one. Um, huh. Performance counter custom action. Oh, is this like a how-to? Probably. Yeah. So, yeah, we should fix it in 3x. I mean, just it's a doc bug. Yeah. We should fix that. Enhance insignia for using cab cache. Yeah, okay. I can't speak to this one. No, I mean, I, I, I could see it being nice if Insignia played well with Cap Cash. Um, have to go dig into it. I don't actually know how hard that would be. But yeah, it'd be kind of cool. Um, probably a 4X thing, though, because of the way signing is in 4X. Oh, yes. Yes, agreed. Yeah, but, you know, we may be doing signing very different 4X, so maybe Insignia doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd try to fix this in 3x, but someone. Uh... I'm yeah. I'm I'm happy taking things that we know are changing, only in 4x to avoid you know having to carry over stuff like that. Yeah, I, I don't have a good preference. Chances anybody does this in 3x are low anyway, unless someone surprises me. Or there are other bugs I think are more interesting than this one. And this isn't a bug, by the way. This is a feature. I changed that already. Sweet. You are on it. Yep. All right. Bundles not removed from the cache. Well, that just... That... Oh. Um, do you have to know what that error number is off the top of your head? No, oh, it doesn't ring a bell. Error, they're not empty. Okay. Um, we are seeing the following the uninstall logs right but so it's not empty it's not clear to me that there's a problem here did they restart I bet it gets all cleaned up if they restart I bet this I was going to say bug. well and I never got a follow up on my question for a yeah, I, full log I'd say, I, I say add the thing try you know the, those things should get cleaned up on restart. If they're held in use, they're scheduled to re remove on restart. Restart the machine, they probably go away. If not, then let it provide a full log, and that'll make that bug go away. That works. Make Wix bundle variable writable so that people could change the manufacturer. Oh, jeepers. Okay. This is this is looking at a symptom rather than the 
uh, whatever. Um, you don't want to necessarily make Wix bundle manufacturer visible. You need a way to change the actual underlying bundle manufacturer. Yeah, uh, wherever it's used. Yeah, and today, like, they're probably looking at this as Wix bundle name. You can actually change the name as the bundle installs. Oh, that is supported. Yes. Oh, that's to, interesting. To some degree. So, I mean, that's what they're asking for here. Oh. It's the same sort of thing. And I never would have thought of that, but sure, it's interesting, I suppose. Um, yeah, if, if the bundle name can be changed that way, then I agree. This probably should be writable as well. Yeah, I think that could be opened. Oh, this is interesting. Bootstrapper call getting wrong detect related MSI package call. Ooh. It's getting called on uninstall when it shouldn't is misleading. Mm -hmm. The event is getting called on uninstall. Uh, package ID, but the tech related package product is actually product code of package B, the action that is coming in as a major upgrade. Uh, okay. So a depends on B to be installed first. So A has an entry in its upgrade table. Min Max, no. Only to, oh, this is another only detect problem, I bet. Yeah, sounds sounds like it. Yeah, I think this is another only detect bug uh, related to the only detect thing. Um, I wish we knew where that other bug was. Um, it's in here somewhere, right? It's probably further down yet. No, it's definitely further down yet. All right. Well, I, this sounds like that exact problem, the yes. other way around during uninstall. Right. Um, well, it's the same. It's the same problem. We're calling it a major upgrade, but it's. Let me say it differently. Not. When we fix the only detect handling and burn, I think this works. Okay. Yes. Agreed. So I would point them at that bug and kill this bug. Uh, I'll see if I can find it. If you can find it. If not, note that we think there's another bug. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was three nine two six three nine two six. Duplicated hotkeys in a Spanish dialogue. Well, that's not right. Shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah. Three X, right? Yeah. Manual links broken on some pages. Can we close this and just toss it in with the other ones and say we have a bunch of things on Wix toolset, you know? Like this isn't specific enough. Um yes, yes. That this this one I agree. In general, I you know, if there are some specific things to go look at and verify that they're fixed. This is another one of that tilde thing. I don't know. I guess we could keep it for this piece of information right here and just make sure that, that one works. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Yeah, okay. That's fine. Dialogues of standard Bush are not DPI aware. Yeah, uh, we. I really would like this fixed. Theme Util needs to understand DPI aware, and I just. I saw that. Have you looked at DPI awareness? Just barely. You have to do some math to get things hooked up and mark yourself DPI aware, and it all just should all just work. But it's not done. So yeah, we should do this. Wix standard BA should theme util needs to handle being DPI aware. Basically, what it comes down to. Right. And I haven't had a machine that did all the DPI stuff. Now I do, but my last one didn't. Right. Well, I'm waiting for for Blue to come out and get the. DPI awareness on individual monitors because I figure that's going to be your pathological case. Yeah, then I have that now. <laughs> yes. So anyway, I, I'm not going to get to that book soon. I have other things I'm doing, but yeah, someone should do it. Out doesn't exist and the build fails. No. I don't care a lot, but we probably shouldn't throw that error message. Wait, is that is this just from? I thought I thought we yeah I thought we did a pass. Um, for all of these. Yeah, well, maybe we missed light. Or lit. This is lit. 
So anyway, um, yeah, three X, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's another easy bug. Unable to change output path on Visual Studio 2012 and X64 configuration. Right. This is the X64 config. Yeah. Oh, they say it has a duplicate 64 config? All right. Yeah, that'd be awesome to fix. I don't know if you want to try to take that in 3.8. I don't want to take it at all. Yeah. Personally, yeah. it requires getting way too deep into votive. Oh, yes. Or at all depth in devotive. Oh, adding X64 config. Ugh. Ugh. Well, I think this is... Uh, the X64 config thing is, you know, a well-known issue. Yeah, there, there's problems. I've, I remember hearing about M M um, X64 not working correctly in MPF and stuff yeah. like that, so it's... <sighs> yeah, I, oh, that's I, interesting, that it works in 2010. Yeah, this could be an MPF problem. Yeah, I, I there were problems in MPF around this build configuration stuff. Build configuration yeah. in Visual Studio alone is atrocious. Anyway, sounds like a 3x thing. Uh, agreed, yes. Manage custom actions. Unable to delete temp extraction directory. Not get deleted. Yeah, we could take it in three X. Yeah, that's fine with me. Wix CMBA sometimes appears inactive. Close button isn't default. Oh, the help window. Yeah, okay. Seems like a thing that could get fixed. Although, I dislike intermittent problems. Well, yeah. It's probably, you know, maybe it's the Focus, focus getting set to a disabled control or something dumb like that. Yeah, focus in general. Yes. But anyway, yes. B bind package bun package version package ID isn't expanded in a bundle. That's odd. Um, it's a variable. That's okay. The whole purpose of package version. Yeah, someone have to look at that. I take it three x. Something's going wrong. <laughs> the the resolved delayed files is not doing the right thing or something. It's bundle are different enough from databases that you know little things like this sneak through sometimes. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, someone should look at that. Run this burn space setup tools roles, both admin and non-admin. Some included package require elevation, but they're not necessary. So for non-admin, I want to skip them gracefully without asking for elevation or denying it. Oh, that's interesting. Well, this is a, kind of a general thing. I've seen Stack Overflow and... Um, otherwise, uh, people saying it would be cool if you could skip, if you, if you can't elevate to only install per user things in a bundle. How do you know you can't elevate? That's the problem, because half the time it's, if UAC is running, you'll always get a consent prompt, and... Sometimes people are saying, well, if, you know, they hit cancel because they don't have a parent or, you know, admin mm -hmm. around. I suppose they could do a 
you know, we could create a plan per user only kind of thing. Yeah, because that's install the, per user only. The other, the flip side would be, you know, yeah, you want your your old school just me or everyone radio buttons. Well, yeah, not even just me, but this would be a you could call elevate. If it fails, you could then call, um, you know, plan per user. That's a good point. Yeah, that's an interesting feature. Yeah, it's a feature. I mean. Oh, yeah, Blair, that's the, yeah. But I think even that, that would show you, that shows you whether you're a UAC admin. The MSIU's real admin detection tells you whether you are a UAC admin, right? It doesn't tell you that you couldn't do an over-the-shoulder elevation. Right. Nothing can tell you that because you have to go try and then figure out if you can or not. Right. Is mom home? Oh, he wants to, I want to skip gracefully without asking for elevation or denying it. Okay, so this would be a, yeah, checkbox or whatever. Or I like... I do like I do like your approach. Try to call elevate, and then if you fail, do something else. Yeah, the problem is you're going to get the elevation prompt, which they don't want here. Right, right. You'll get the over the shoulder prompt. Yeah. Um, but All right, well, you can still I, do you I, at this point we're we far enough down it that it's an interesting right. enough feature that we could right. talk about it. Um, yeah, that live in three X if you wanted. Okay, we're. I don't think we're, we'd break anything. It's additive, right? I assume it's additive. Yeah. Well, it would have to be in three X. Yes. If it's not, then. Oh, go do something else. It's add a reference to another project. Add a reference to Wix extensions. However, I cannot. We cannot add a reference to regular DLL. What is the reason? Is it possible? I don't understand. NuGet packages referenced as Wix projects. I don't know why you would reference a DLL. What would it do? You get the path to it as a project reference, I guess? That doesn't make sense. I don't know why no. you do this. They're trying to avoid project references. But no, they they cannot add a reference. And then they will be included as references in WIC projects. I don't understand. I don't understand the, the link to... Yeah, I, I get that. They want to reference some some random folder or you know some random DLL. I don't know what it gets you though. I don't know, like, what do you want? You want the, I guess, what you'd get is the, you'd want the target path is what you're after. <laughs> so, okay. Fine. If someone wanted to add it, they could. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I don't like that mechanism of adding stuff anyway. But yeah, okay, fine. If they wanted to add it, it'd be votive, and you could take it in three X if they want to do it. It basically gets you the target path to a DLL. As opposed to what? It's kind of weird because in their project reference, you're gonna have a dot 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 dot, you know, whatever to wherever the thing is. Oh, but they're going to add that via NuGet. That's what they want. So that's going to get added to their project via NuGet automatically. That's why they want it. 
Nougat's going to do the dot, 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 dot thing for them. That's what they're trying to get. Where? Into the, so into their MS build, into their Wix proj, they'll do add, you know, Nougat, and that will end up creating a project reference and add direct project references to the DLLs. And then the Wix proj looks at it and goes, I don't know what that is. Um, so... So yeah, it, it's basically the same thing as doing a NuGet restore and then doing a, in your WXS file, doing a reference to dot, 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 packages, whatever, 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 wherever your NuGet thing is. So uh, it, it's saving them that. And I guess it, it can just, the other thing is you'll get the NuGet restore work correctly. So I can kind of see. And yeah, so they basically want to simplify what's in their WXS file so they don't have the dot, 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 dot there as well. Uh, whatever. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. So, sure. Um, sure. If someone wanted to go in and add it, yeah, this is, yeah. It's an interesting thing for Votive to go try to handle. Yeah. So, anyway, sure. Uh, could go in 3x, I don't think it would break anything. And it's a Votive thing. Ah, uh, yes. All right, let's see how much far we can go. Patches cannot specify compression level. Really? It's true. What is the default? I, I open I the box. Really um, I, I, it seems like something that should be allowed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't care. 3x? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a it's a fairly tiny feature. Oh, okay. If you say so. I open the bug, so yes. Yes. I, I, I didn't know if you looked at it. License appears blank if RTF content is too short. Oh, really? Um, if the license yeah. is so short that the scroll bar is not rendered, then it will appear. Yeah, yeah. Appear is blank. It MSI UI or Wix standard BA? Regardless of RTF editor. I guess I can see the control doing that. I... <laughs> RTF is dumb enough you could believe that. <laughs> um, I, I, I would want someone to verify it before we put something in the documentation. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll change it to a doc bug and, you know... I'm not going to go fix RTF, and I'm not sure. Yeah. And we're um, not going to add new lines. or. <laughs> no. So you create an RTF document that says foo, and then try to run it in RTF and see where it goes. Hmm. That should be short enough, right? Bind time variable escaping doesn't support bang. Bind time variables can't be referenced next to another bang. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, hey, Bob opened this bug. Yeah, oh, we yeah, should fix that. I agree. That that sounds busted, if true. Um, failure, right? Oh, I hate these. Yeah, this is going to be some... <sighs> Almost always these ends up being the something else modified the database and you can't edit it and yada 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 oh like during the install yeah because they had a strange transaction mechanism in their API I honestly think we should whack all of this code and switch it all to being XML manipulation at this point it's just such a horrendous mess that they created ugh I don't know how hard it is to hack via the XML versus the API, but I almost would rather we do that at this point, given how many problems this API has given us. True. Um, cause it's just it's just this never-ending issue. 
Although this says fail to get site. Oh, site section. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Open in 3x? Yeah. I don't know what to do about this thing. After I write the service as custom action, maybe I'll go through and rewrite the IS custom actions. <laughs> yeah. Sure, because that's fun. Oh, it's such a big task. I'm not looking forward to it at all. Missing target files and distribution. Well, that seems wrong. And we'll call it after this bug. That works. Yep. The bug, yep. What? Okay, yep. 3.7 is missing some of the target's files that should be in there. Mm. I hope they're in there now. Yeah, that's... I kind of thought we'd have heard more complaints if they were missing in the zip. Well, maybe we should update the documentation. I don't know. 3.6.3220. What the heck is that build? Anyway. Um, or does that build number change? Maybe that build number changes. Mm, I don't think so. No. Oh, no. Daily builds. It won't. Try it again. Oh yeah, Sook. It does now. <laughs> well, kind of. That's interesting. That's a bug. That's these, a. These used to yeah. get replaced, and they don't get replaced anymore. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we should fix the dock in this. Whatever the dock is wrong. Um, Blair or John, does the that targets file live in the bin path, or does yeah does it live in the bin folder now, or does it live in the root of the zip file? There, there is no bin. There is no bin folder. All right. Well, then maybe it was a temporary mistake. There was some mistakes for a little while. Anyway, I say we close this bug. Yeah. If that's all. It, and maybe open a new bug about the doc on that page. <laughs> I can do that. That sounds great. All right. Unable to open in in VS two thousand five with three seven. So wait, we took. I thought we, this is one of those, I thought we took, I don't think we support VS 2005 and, no, we don't support 2005 and Wix 3.7. Cool, so let's close this bug saying that and then refer to previous bug about having the um, the matrix of things that are supported. Uh, yes. I'm just looking ahead a little bit because these are going a little easier. We would like to be able to force the invocation of the MSI UI on subsequent runs of the bootstrapper. So they want to show UI in maintenance mode. Yeah, that's not going to happen without engine changes. Engine changes. Right. Yeah. Right. So Burn would have to support that. Sorry, I mean, MSI? right now the model, the model of planning separate from execution does not fit with Display internal UI. Right. This part of display internal UI. In maintenance mode. In Sorry. maintenance mode, yeah. Because the MSIs don't get launched in maintenance mode, right? Um, yeah, I, you know, Blair's like, don't, won't fix. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of 
It's like, yeah, this is going to be the thing that breaks you down. You you need to move. You need to change your... If you're going to use burn for this, change it. Yeah. Although we probably should make it pretty clear somewhere that that's going to happen. So maybe this turns into a doc bug to say that display internal UI will never work for maintenance yeah, mode. Yeah. Or uninstall. Not that you get an uninstall anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it, we yeah we talk about it and it comes up and they want personally. I mean, what, what this comes down to is you know we need someone needs a, uh, a an easier way of doing UI from Wix standard VA. Uh, John, which feature support? You mean like selectable features from MSI packages? Uh, well, yeah, but there's another thing that's like... Yeah, that, that's going to really mess up the world anyway, because then if you turn all the features off, you end up with an uninstall, and then it's just going to all get confused, and it ends up being horribly painful. Essentially what we'd need is Windows installer to support. Let me show this MSI, figure out what it's going to do, and then later on actually do what it would do, which of course MSI doesn't have that capability of being broken into two passes. Essentially I want to run the install UI sequence and then later on run the install SKU sequence. <laughs> right. It, it's just brutal. It just doesn't fit. Just doesn't fit. All right, we'll stop there. Um, John, that's exactly the way you're going. You look at like Visual Studio, they don't have selectable features at it within the MSI. Everything's based on a whole package, and it does make things a lot simpler. In so many different ways, but yes. So there we go. So um, there we go. I don't know how many bugs we got through. I hit refresh, it's probably not going to tell me quite the right number. 655. That, that wasn't 50 bugs, was it? We start with... No, we must start with like 680, right? It was not quite 700, but I think we probably got through 35 or 40 bugs. All right, that's great. So I still have some I have to close. And there's still a few left here that I saw that we got through that haven't been handled yet, but that's okay. They're still in my browser. Yep. And... Um, Cool. So, I don't know why it feels interesting that we might break 600, but that still sounds like <laughs> sounds like a milestone. It sounds like a lot. So yes. anyway, thank you for spending your time with Triage. Um, we will. I'll get this posted. We will. I'm going to be sending out the uh, agenda for the meeting on Thursday, so we'll be doing that as well. So you guys will get a double dose this week and probably a few weeks going forward. I guess if we get through 30 bugs, we could actually get through this in you know some amount of time, right? If we get through 50 bugs a week, that would actually be pretty interesting. Yes. Because that's actually a much more reasonable number, isn't it? 50, no, it's still a lot. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Eventually, we'll hit the bugs that are years old, and we'll get less interested. Yeah, probably true. Well, eventually Which they turn into, doesn't do this. Yeah, eventually they turn into features, right? <laughs> it's a wall exactly. of features. Yeah, true. Although we're probably building up, I'm curious, what do we have in 3x open? Yeah, see, we're already up to 100 bugs in 3x open. Plenty of opportunities for people to jump in and do fun stuff if they wanted to. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to have to start advertising easy bugs that could be fixed by someone and that wanted to just get the hang of submitting bugs and then maybe I start having to hang out you know, little stars or badges for the people that fixed the most number of bugs, which means all the low-hanging fruit would disappear, assuming that people I'd, actually wanted the bugs. I'd be uh, okay with that. Badges. Yeah. So, all right. Well, there we go, gentlemen. Have a wonderful evening, afternoon. Any ladies? No, I, not, I don't think so. Not with the names that are currently being displayed here. But uh, there we go. And we'll see you guys on Thursday. Cheers. Bye.